Trudy Harrison MP was elected here in Copeland in a by-election back in 2017. And it was a a pretty big national by-election. She held the seat in the 17 election and increased her majority again in the 2019 general election. So there's been a Conservative Member of Parliament sitting for this constituency for the last three elections. And that of itself is actually pretty remarkable because this part of Cumbria had been represented by Labour since way before World War II. And Trudy joins me right now in front of her constituents here in Copeland. Now, thus far, thus far, we've talked about the budget, we've talked about the proposals put forward by Jeremy Hunt. Thus far, this lot don't seem to be all that impressed. Um, how would you assess today's budget? Um, I got the memo. Stick into the plan. Don't want to go back to square one. Yes, we've ticked many of the boxes. Growth is up slightly. Better than Germany, better than France, oh, better than Italy. I thought we were in recession. But it's still up. And inflation is <laughs> well, I mean, Well, I mean, you're right, you're right. Actually, in one way you're right. We are doing better than France and Germany and Italy. Um, and, and Brexit clearly hasn't damaged us. But, but being better than those basket cases isn't that good of itself, is it, really? And there is more to do. But I think in this particular neck of the woods. We are quite unique. For example, the national average wage is 31,000. Here it's 49,000. And we are in a, a particularly strong nuclear economy which really holds us in a strong place. So the best bit for me is when Rishi mentioned nuclear, because that is what we actually Yeah, and that was one of the reasons, on. Trudy, wasn't it? One of the reasons that you stood for that by-election. Absolutely. That you got Head involved with politics. Above it's obviously wind scale as it was, sailor yeah. field as it is now. Just how many jobs does that provide for this part of the country? About 27,000. There's about 80,000 nuclear workers in the country. And of those, about 27,000 work in this area. Nobody does nuclear better than we do in West Cumbria. We've got seven reactors. Nowhere else is there that concentration of reactors and all of the processes around not just Sellafield, but also the supply chain as well. And that's why we have such a high average wage. But coupled with the fact that we also have relatively affordable houses, the average house price is about 310,000 and ours is about 155,000. It's a good place to live. Yeah, well, you could get a flood of people now moving in after those comments. And you might not be thankful, we need I don't to, know. Because <laughs> the worst thing for our area is actually we are the fastest decline in population in England, declining at a rate of about 5%. And even more scarily is the fact that Barrow is the second fastest decline in local so authority. So it's Cumbria, it's this coast. It's West Cumbria, yeah. We went through a period, really, of almost 20 years with no clearly defined nuclear policy. Oh, we had one. You it know. was switch it off and knock it down. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's OK, because, I mean, Boris told us that wind turbines might solve all of our problems. And you were his PPS, weren't you? Well, there cannot have been a day when I didn't tell Boris, nuclear will do that. When we were talking about levelling up and you want jobs outside of London and the South East, nuclear does that. Now, it seems that, I mean... When you want apprenticeships, yeah. nuclear no, does no, that. No, no, I mean, I get all of that. It seems that we now have a nuclear policy from the Conservative government. Hunt was very warm mm. about potentially the next generation of nuclear reactors. I mean, equally, I think Labour are in, are in the same place too, aren't they? Well, they've had a bit of a change, but I don't particularly believe it. I'm rather nervous that it's hard enough. You know, the Conservatives have switched on every nuclear power station this country has ever had. And it's hard enough for us to get new nuclear going. We've got Hinkley Point C. I very much hope that we get Rolls-Royce, small modular reactors in our area as well. But it's really difficult getting anything done. Yeah, and they're long-term the decisions. But what's interesting, Trudy, is this, that you know, your government, you know, and you've been with them through this net zero mania. I mean, Boris was addicted to it. Uh, they are rowing back ever so slightly on one or two areas. But isn't it extraordinary that here we are in this part of the country, which has been associated with energy for centuries, mm. whether it's coal or nuclear. I mean, this is where it's been at very for, so. for a very, very long time. And a couple of years ago, the approval was given for a new open cast coal mine yeah. Yeah. in this constituency, producing high quality coal 
very important coal for steel grade making, yeah. grade A, for many other things. And yet, it seems the budget is going to maintain super taxes on those that invest in oil and gas in the North Sea. Why is this coal mine, given that it was approved, still not open? It was approved locally three times by the then Cumbria County Council. It was then called in and the government, I think it was the 7th of December 2022, then agreed it again, but it's tied up currently in a legal tangle, which is, I think, why so much of our infrastructure does get held up. But, you know, despite being an environment minister, despite being a decarbonisation minister in transport and mm. the chair of the environment APPG, I am fully behind extracting this critical raw material in the cleanest, greenest way possible, not to mention the amount of private sector investment. And I think that's often lost on people. This is all private sector Trudy, investment. Trudy, it's all well and good to say that. But, you know, the government is pushing for net zero. Mm -hmm. Right? Net zero means pushing up the price of electricity for these people in this room by subsidising uh, wind energy, perhaps being the, clear, you know, the clearest example of that, and by deindustrializing. We close down manufacturing plant, we say, hooray, we're producing less carbon dioxide, that business now goes and, it, and the stuff is manufactured in China or India. Do you support net zero? We have four times more manufacturing in this area. You support net zero. I support decarbonisation. You do. But I do think... And if that, that means deindustrialisation, that's fine. So I, I also think that the 10-point plan for a green industrial revolution was quite exciting, but every single part of it needs steel. So whether you want to build nuclear <coughs> power stations, small ones, advanced ones, or gigawatt plus, if you want to build wind turbines, if you want to transition towards electric vehicles, which are a lot faster than the combustion engine, you can't deny a Tesla Roadster at 1.9 seconds, not to 60, is pretty impressive. Well, given the number of speed cameras that have been put up in the last few years, what's the point of it anyway? I mean, you can't go anywhere without being flashed, it seems to But me. it will all need steel. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I'm going back from here to Kent tonight, and EV's not much good to me, is it, really? Because I need to stop for half an hour somewhere. I recommend T-Bay. Definitely the best service station in the country. Right, the well, I, 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 don't, I can't answer to that. I, I, I will trust your knowledge. Here's my point. That on the one hand, the government says it wants to be pro-business. On the other hand, it is, you know, absolutely committed to net zero. We're about to close primary steel production in South Wales. We're about to lose primary steel production, I think, up on the Humber. With the world as it is, with perhaps the greatest external potential military threat that we've seen certainly in 60 years and maybe even in 80 years, this country under a Conservative government is about to become a country that doesn't produce any primary steel. And all of it... <laughs> and all of it to meet net zero targets. And I just think the public well, are very confused. Well, that is utter rubbish, because I think it's war-grade hypocrisy not to produce coking coal from this country, and, of course, we should be producing steel as well. Not least because there isn't enough old steel knocking about in the world to put into electric car furnaces to create the recycled steel, but also for a precise engineering, aerospace, nuclear defence... We're going to need the virgin steel as well. So on that, no. I completely agree no, with I you. No, I know, I know. And yet, one of the reasons why we've reduced our carbon emissions more than any other Western country is we've lost so much of this business. Well, we talk a good game on where we are with um, our energy uh, decarbonisation. But actually, only 17% of our energy makeup is electricity. The remaining 83% is heat and transport. So we've got a way to go. And that's another brilliant thing about nuclear, because we can power the electrolyzers to produce the hydrogen, to go into the hydrogen on vehicles that, that, that won't run I on am, batteries. On the, and, of course, it produces no carbon emissions. On that, I'm 100%. It is the idiot. only proven large-scale... Yeah. Uh, zero carbon generation that will work it anywhere works. in the world 24 no, I get hours, it. seven I get days it. a week. I get it. Well, let's hope they do push on uh, both parties, whoever's in government next time, and do it. Finally, you know, you got involved in politics because you're a local campaigner, local woman, you care about stuff. This is this area is in your blood. I know it is. I've been talking yeah, to you earlier. I love it. You've done your bit. I know there's a few constituency changes, boundary changes going on up here. 
Uh, but that's it, you're done. You're off, you're retiring. No, no, no. I am leaving Parliament because, unlike you, Nigel, I'm a bit fed up of politics. But I think the national policies are there or thereabouts. But I worry that in this area, we won't be able to, you know, capitalise on the benefits of those national policies. As a minister, I would go to the Oxford... Cambridge, London Triangle and see how those areas were really switched on with their business community and the local councils. I want us to be like that. All right, really you're, so you're back to being a local campaign is really what you're saying. I'm always going to be an activist. Right, well you've done your bit, you've done your bit, you've done your time, some would say. Last question. You were PPS to one Boris Johnson. What was I that was. like? Well, do you know what? I didn't get a peerage, but I got 24 gigawatts. I'm happy about that. <laughs> Trudy Harrison, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. On TV News. We'll take a break.